Oh, hey everybody. This week on Ask Kristen, it's worth remembering that people are not like houses. Even if you so-called flip them, renovate them, restore their foundations to everything that you know they possibly could be. At no point can you put them on the market and make a handsome profit off of him or her and then retire to Hawaii. Kristen question is coming from Elizabeth. Why am I often attracted to broken guys? I kind of feel like I can fix him or I can be there for him. Could it be because I'm a very empathetic person? Maybe I'm just always inclined to cheer for the underdog. It's messing with my relationships and my head. When I read your comment, the first person this old narcissistic host thought of was... I'm not re referring to uh, professor boyfriend slash fiance now uh, being like a DIY project for me. He is his own house with working plumbing and walk-in closets. As I was thinking about this fixer-upper syndrome, as some people on the internet call it, I wondered what kind of relationship attachment style that reflected. I have a hunch that this does trend a little more anxious attachment because there's something from that other person that we need more than just their presence. We need them to be a project. We need to know that we're fixing something. We need to know that we can be appreciated for more than just who we are, but the specific thing that we can give them. In a way, it's kind of like replaceability insurance. If you can get this person fitter, healthier, better dressed, more successful, and happier, then how on earth would that person ever want to leave you, ever think that he or she could find a suitable substitute for what an incredible person you are. In all of our cases, we are amazing and unique and wonderful in our own special ways. And we have so much to give to all of these people. And there's nothing wrong with wanting to be like really, 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 really good to another person. But I think Elizabeth, that the thing you really have to pay attention to is first what your motivation is. Are you really just wanting to be a cheerleader? Because there are a lot of things you can cheerlead. You can cheerlead sports teams, you can cheerlead friends who could always use cheerleading. Or ultimately, do you need that person to cheerlead you? By virtue of becoming indebted to you, telling you things like, I've never met anyone like you before in my life. No one understands me like you do. I would be nowhere without you. In my case, when I have gone for more broken guys, if I could save that person who seemed unsavable, well then that would mean that I'm truly special. And when you start deriving your sense of being truly special from someone else, you get into dangerous territory. Important thing number two, you have to make sure that it's a two-way street. If you're the one giving, 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 giving everything that you've got to this other person, and they're taking, 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 and, and may not even have the wherewithal to give back, that's gonna be tough to maintain for the long term. With fixer-upper types of situations, they aren't necessarily looking to share your load because theirs is like so much, and it's kinda like a thing of like, well, if you wanna date me, if you can handle all of this, then go for it. But when you need something, mm, relationships go through ebbs and flobes. Flobes. Sometimes when things are, are, are not flobin, one person in their relationship will be carrying a lot more than the other person. But it shifts. That's some beauty of relationships, at least in my experience. When professor or fiance is a little too tired, then I'll wheelbarrow him down the beach. And then when I get too tired, he'll wheelbarrow me. <laughs> Not to mention that you need to be wary of developing codependent relationships. This person can't literally function without me, and I can't function without that person needing me so much. And all I'm suggesting here is just examining your own motives. Just check yourself. Things like journaling can be super helpful for opening up that line of radical honesty and openness with yourself. And that might seem strange because you're like, Kristen, I'm talking to myself. How could I not be open and honest with myself? Answer, it's so easy. But if you continue to ask yourself why questions and open-ended questions, you will start to peel away the layers of what might be going on. And at the end, you might get 
to empathy. But again, I just wonder whether your romantic relationship is the best place to direct that caregiving energy. This is different, I think, from, say, dating someone and maybe helping them out in the wardrobe department. But if you are looking for a DIY project, I suggest you divert that energy elsewhere. Now friends, I'm curious to know from you, has this been your experience where you found yourself kind of going for a fixer-upper project or, and I've also experienced this as well, have you been someone's fixer-upper project? And thanks to everybody who watched and commented on last week's Ask Kristen video all about daddy issues. Jennifer Durant said, I think the phrase daddy issues is such a cruel way to talk about people who've suffered because at the most vulnerable time in someone's life, their parent or parents didn't show love and support to them the way they needed to be. And daddy issues can be really hard to deal with. Helena Priam said, when I started spotting those daddy issues in my relationship, I became a bit fixated wondering what if I like him because he's my dad? But the next step for me was to recognize that some interests I have, like science fiction for example, I shared with my father first. Now they're part of my own personality and I thank him for the little nice moments we shared as a family. And as always, if you've got questions, let me know below so I can give you some answers.